So with most jobs, you're going to be using multiple kits at the same time. That's the way things normally work is you're going to use more than one kit. So I want to go over a few uh, tips for you so that you can make sure to plan out how and where to stage all of these kits and when to catalyze them. The first thing you're probably going to want to do here is you want to know exactly how much area you are covering. So you have a little wheeled measurer here and I've measured out this space so now I know exactly how many square feet this space has. The next thing I need to do is go to my material and find out how many square feet one bucket of material will cover at the recommended mill thickness. Once I do that and I do that math, then I know how many kits I need to use and I can have those kits ready to be catalyzed and then I know that I have the correct amount of material, not too little, not too much. So I've measured out the square footage and I have 180 square feet that we're going to cover here with our Street Bond 220. At a 60 mil thickness, I know that each bucket of Street Bond 220 can give me 90 square feet of coverage. So now I know that two kits will cover 180 square feet of material. I'm going to make sure that I have two kits ready to go. I also know that when I'm roughly finished with half of this space, it's time to have that second kit catalyzed and ready so that we can maintain a wet edge when we're applying the material. On a typical job where multiple kits of material are being used, we recommend that you have at least five people on the job. Two of them are going to be squeegeeing out the material. So you have two squeegee people. You have one back roller who's following the squeegee people and going that one pass forward, one pass back just to even out the finish. You have one person who's mixing the material only. And then the last person is going to be a runner who's going to take the material from the mixing area, bring it over into the field of application, dump it, and allow those squeegeers and back rollers to do their job. We always keep a wet edge right here because we want to make sure that we're rolling or squeegeeing into the wet product. If you don't, there's going to be what's known as a lap mark where you'll see where the one pass ends and the other one begins. But if you keep a wet edge, that lap mark's going to smooth itself out. 